In this video, we're going to review how to create objects. So objects are uh, these entities in a programming language that put some sort of actions, those are functions, and data, things like variables, in the same place so that they can interact together easily. Now that's really abstract, so we're going to do something uh, more concrete. We're going to create a tiny, tiny little game in the style of old text adventure games. So I'm going to give you an example of some screenshots of stuff like this. So for example, uh, the program would print out, you're in an open field west of a big house with a boarded front door. There's a small mailbox here. And then the user will type in things like open mailbox. Okay, and the computer knows how to respond to that. The game knows how to respond. It'll say, opening the mailbox reveals a leaflet. And you'll say, take the leaflet. And it'll say, taken. And then you can also request to look at your inventory. By typing in inventory, you are carrying a leaflet. All right, so very old-fashioned game. Um, but you can do even like combat type things. Uh, the axe hits your sword and knocks it spinning. You're, then you say, get sword, taken. The axe gets you right in the side, ouch. Status, like the player's trying to look at its status. Now, the game doesn't know every single possible word. And this one responds with, I don't know the word status. And then it gets glitchy, and I'm not sure what's going on here. Um, but you get the idea. So what we're going to do is create at least one object for a particular location in the game. So, and then we're going to use that object. So let's go ahead and do that. So I created a new Python window. I'm going to delete all the default text. And I'm going to create uh, a class named location. OK. Now, to create any sort of object, I always need an init function. And init is defined with two underscores, I-N-I-T, two more underscores, self in parentheses, and then any other arguments we want to give it. We'll worry about those other arguments later. All right, so this is init. Um, our location is going to have at least five attributes. One attribute is going to be a description. OK, and for now, I'm just going to make it an empty string. Later, I'll figure out what I want the description to be. This is the text that's going to appear when our player arrives at a location. Um, and then the next four things are going to be um, actually other locations that we can go to from the current location. Now, I'm going to start them all off none. So typically in these games, you can say go north, go south, go east, go west. And that will put you in a new location. So that's what I'm going to do here. All right. This is a complete object. I can create this object, and I can use it if I want to. So let's make an example of that. So I can say, um, so I was thinking that I would make something like uh, this little setup right here. You can make a little house, um, but you could do this any which way you want. So I'll, I'll create the dining room in the middle here, for starters. So I'll say dining room equals location. And let's see, I can give the dining room a description. If I want to give the dining room a description, the way I access its description variable is with a dot. So I use the variable's name, dining room, and then a dot. And PyScriptor will try and auto-complete this for you. Right? I can use the up and down arrow keys and go through this list. I can select description and just hit enter, and it'll fill it in for me. So I'm going to give this location a description, uh, a fancy dining room. And then I'm going to print out that description. OK, so pretty simple program. Let's make sure it works, though. All right, prints out a fancy dining room. Great. OK, now this is not typically how we want to change variables that belong to our object. We don't want to use the dot to set those variables, especially if it's something that seems pretty natural to set right at the start. Right? The description of our location is probably not going to change very much. So it would make sense to describe it right at the beginning when we create the object. So I'm going to add another attribute to this object's constructor, to the, the init, called description. It has the same name as this attribute right here, and that's fine. Instead of setting description equal to an empty string, I'm going to set it equal to this description uh, variable. Now, if I run it, 
I get an error. It says, actually, let's look at the bigger error. Type error. Init is missing one required positional argument description, right? So I was supposed to pass in some information right here, and I didn't do that, so it caused an error. All right, well, very easy fix. We're going to pass this information to the location, and I'm going to get rid of this line. Okay, now it should work just as before. Okay, great. I have a fancy dining room. Now, before I go on uh, and add anything to my object, I'm actually going to create um, my other rooms very quickly here, and I'm going to connect them. So I'll create a kitchen. Uh, it's also going to be a location. Uh, I'm going to give it a different description in just a moment. I'm going to create a bath. I'm going to create the front porch. And what else did I say? Bedroom. I'm going to create a bedroom. All right. Um, I'm not going to give them descriptions for now, but I am going to connect them to the dining room. Okay, so the way I'm going to do that is with that dot again. Dining room dot north. If I head north from the dining room, I'm going to go to... I'm sorry, I keep forgetting how my house is set up. Okay. So the kitchen is to the north. So I'm going to set this equal to the kitchen. Uh, I'm going to do the same thing with all the other directions. Okay, so now I have this nicely connected uh, house right here. Um, and I'm printing the description of the dining room. Uh, so the next thing that I want to do is I want to be able to uh, put objects in a location and take them away from the location. So let's modify our class location to have a list of uh, basically things that can be picked up in this location. So self.pickups. And it's going to be a list. All right, uh, I'm going to add some description to each location and add just a couple pickups, and I'm going to speed through that portion, uh, and then we'll figure out our next step. Okay. I'm going to write a new function, actually a method, which is a function that belongs to an object, to add pickups or remove pickups from a location. So this will be a really handy thing for me to do when I want to put some uh, things that the player can pick up in these different locations. So I'm going to define a function called add pickup. I always have to start all the functions that belong to an object with self. This is how the object refers to itself. And then the second argument is, I'm just going to call it x. It's the thing that's going to be added to the list of pickups. All right, I'm just going to do self.pickups.append and put x in that list. And then similarly, we can remove a pickup. And which one are we going to remove? We're going to remove x. And so what we'll do is self remove, or no, self.pickups.remove, because lists know how to remove an object, x. And I'm actually going to return that x so that the player can then add it to their inventory uh, if we want to do that later on. OK, so I've got these now six different attributes of my object, and I've got uh, three different functions if I include the constructor, the init function. I've also got these two down here. All right, so based on our descriptions, I'm going to add different things. So I said in the kitchen that there's flour on the counter and dishes in the sink. So I'm going to say kitchen dot add, oh, dot add pickup, and it's going to be flour. And then separately, I'm going to add dishes.
All right, now I'm gonna write a little loop that lets my player actually interact with these locations and move between them. So let's try that. So I've created the player's location, set it to the dining room for a start. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look for some kind of response from the user. I'm gonna use input to keep getting response and I'm only gonna end the game if the user says quit. The input is gonna print out all the text that I wanna print out. It's gonna say UC and then the current location's description. And then uh, I'm gonna ask the user what they wanna do in response. So I'm gonna make a new line and then a uh, greater than sign or a right arrow to get their response. Actually, that's not necessary because I'm using an input box. We won't do that. All right, but now I need to actually respond to what the user says. So I'm gonna have a bunch of if elif statements. So if the response is uh, double equals, if the response is north, I'm gonna have the player move north I'm gonna quickly fill these in for all the directions. Now I'm gonna add the ability for the user to take something from a location. I'm gonna use the starts with function. You can use starts with on any string. So response is a string. And I can ask if it starts with take. So we'll use the keyword take for the user to pick up an item from a location. Now, once they use take, we need to check and see which item they're actually taking. So then we're gonna use ends with to see how their response ends. And we're gonna check against each object that's at our current location. So for uh, a pickup, in the current location dot pickups we're going to see if the response ends with this same pickup right and pickup is it's just a string all these things that we added to each location like flower dishes towel watch were simply strings we added them as text and so we're going to take them as text all right so we're going to check if the response ends with the pickup then we're going to uh, set the item equal to whatever that thing was that was picked up. And actually, let's not do that. Let's just remove it from the location. So location dot remove pickup. Um, yeah, what was that thing that we're removing? Oh, the pickup itself. Right there we go. All right. Now it'd be nice to know if we successfully pick something up or not. So let's create a little success variable. And we're gonna set that to false. We're gonna assume that we were not successful. And if we do pick something up, then success is going to become true. And we're gonna break out of this loop. We're not gonna check any of the other items in this loop. So we're gonna break out. Now afterwards, we're gonna check if we were successful and that's gonna determine what we print. So if we're successful, then we're gonna print out picked up and then whatever it was that we picked up and else we're going to print out command not recognized now there might be some better ways to do this um, first of all all this stuff here is getting a bit complicated to keep inside this while loop to keep inside this elif this might be a nice thing to put inside a function somewhere um, the other issue is that now we're printing, uh, and this will show up down in the console down here, but the rest of the interaction with the user is in an input box that's gonna show up in the middle of the screen. That's kind of obnoxious. It might be nice to put uh, this text in a variable that we then print in the input window so that everything is showing up in the input window. Um, but these are details that we can figure out later. I just wanna see if uh, our game is going to work at all. So I'm going to try and run it and play it and also uh, exit from the game carefully. So let's put a little finished at the end so I know if I exited. Um, let's see. So I'm, gonna, so I'm starting in the dining room. 
So I'm gonna go north to the kitchen and I'm gonna pick up some flour and dishes. Okay, so let's try and do that. All right, I see a fancy dining room. Uh, I am going to head north. All right. Oh, it says I see a fancy dining room. And then it prints out north. Okay, so something didn't work out the way I wanted it to. So let's see if I can figure out what went wrong, right? You see a fancy dining room, right? And I typed north. Okay, and it just says that I see a fancy dining room. Okay, so let's cancel out of there. Now it gives me an error when I cancel, that's okay. Um, so let's see what went wrong. So I got my response here. I checked if it uh, was north. And I set my location to location.north. So I'm not exactly sure what's going on here. Let's print out the, ah, I see, see the issue. This is actually a tricky thing, right? What I was gonna do was print out response and see if it's what I think it is. Um, I expect it to be north, right? And I'm actually gonna put that in here as a comment. I expect north. All right, so let's run it. North, okay. I expect north and I got nothing blank. All right, so you may have spotted what the error is already. It's a really easy mistake to make. Uh, what happens is, so I'm gonna double click on response right here. It should highlight wherever response shows up. And there's one place that it really should show up that it doesn't, right here. All right, I, there's a typo. Very hard to find, um, but this should fix it. All right, now we see, aha, it's auto-completing because I've already got that variable somewhere. Great, now my program should work. So let's try it out. You see a fancy dining room. Great, you want to head north, okay. Aha, so you see a messy kitchen with flour on the counter and dishes in the sink. Great, so success, I made it north to the kitchen. So I'm going to take dishes. Okay, and hit enter. All right, I picked up the dishes is what it says. Great, now that didn't actually change anything except for removing the dishes. If I try to take the dishes again, it will tell me that I cannot do that. Command not recognized. All right, and you'll notice the description didn't change either. If we were making a fancier program, we would change this description so the dishes didn't actually appear in the sink anymore, at least not in the text. All right, so now I'm gonna take the flower and everything works as expected. Now, if I try to go south, if I try to go back to the dining room, I'm gonna get, I think an error. Yeah, I'm gonna get an error, all right? Because what happened was I set my, lo I set my location as the location to the south, but I only connected the dining room northeast, south, and west. I never actually connected the uh, kitchen it's south value, right? I would have needed to say kitchen.south equals the dining room. And now I can go south. Actually, I'll show you that very briefly just to make sure that works. All right, so I'm in the dining room and I head north. Okay, great, I see a, a messy kitchen right here. Now I can head back south and it's no problem. Great, I'm back in the dining room, right? I have to connect these things, uh, otherwise their value is none because I set up here that it just defaults to none. All right, that's sufficient for this video. All I was trying to show you was how to uh, create an object or a class and interact with it. So I start with the keyword class, I name uh, my object. It should start with a capital letter. I'm always gonna have some kind of constructor. The constructor is called init. It has two underscores in front and two underscores at the end. I can pass values to it to specify how I want to create my location. But I can also create these values and change them later, which is what I do with the dining room, right? So the dining rooms, north, east, west, and south, I create down here, or I set their value down here. I don't create them, I set their value. I can create more than one location, and that's what I do. I create a dining room, it's a location. I create a kitchen, it's a location. The bath is a location, all the porch, all these different things. Now, objects can also have functions, which are called methods when they belong to an object. That's not too important. And I created uh, two of those that weren't the constructor. So I created add pickup and remove pickup. And this just lets me interact with this list right here a little bit more easily and uh, safely in case I want to, you know, maybe I want 
uh, some sort of safety check here to make sure the object actually exists in the list. What if I try and remove something that isn't there? That could be a problem. Um, and then I wanted to show you how to interact with uh, objects. So if you're inside of the object itself, you need to use self to refer to the variables that belong to this object. So self.pickups. It sort of means my pickups. If I'm the location, these are the pickups that I have. And they're gonna be different for different locations, right? The dining room doesn't actually have any pickups in it, but the kitchen has two because we added them right here. Might help to see this to space this out a little bit, right? Here's the dining room, here's the kitchen. Dot is really important. Dot means belong to. So when I say kitchen.addPickup dishes, what I mean is kitchen, the add pickup function that belongs to you, call it, tell it to add some dishes. When I do things such as dining room.north, I mean the north that belongs to dining room, set the value to be kitchen. Uh, and then I created this loop down here that's basically getting responses from the user. It's printing some stuff out. There's a bit of a complicated part here where I can take things from my location, um, but it could be more complicated. It could actually change the description of the location. That would be an interesting thing. All right, so this is just a basic start and I hope it's showed you how to interact with objects.